what's good everyone welcome welcome this is going to be something completely different to what i've ever done before i don't want to call this a podcast because i'm i mean i guess it would be i'm just really just using the mic and i'm just going to be talking about some ideas that i have and this is going to be long form this is going to be a long a long conversation or me just going on a rant and you'll be able to get an idea of what's going on in my head and you'll be able to maybe just get a different perspective on things because with YouTube, the prop man, the main problem with YouTube, and I, I, I've been talking about problems with YouTube lately, but just on a on a like size type of level, I can't go above 12, 13 minutes because if I do that, the the file sizes are so gigantic, it's it's impossible. It's impossible for me to to really. I mean, if I want to have anything over 20 minutes, and a lot of things I talk about can easily go for an hour, hour plus. And um, especially if I have one or two other people I'm talking with, oh my god, I mean, it just, it lasts forever. And you can't do that on a gaming video. So, this will help, and I, I can achieve a nice little balance here. And these are probably easier to do, too. I don't have to worry about filling free air. I can kind of think. I can stumble over my words and just not give a fuck, and it's not a big deal. Um, so, I hope you enjoy. I don't really know what I want to call this yet, but we'll think of something. Anyway... Today I want to talk about the difference between real sports and esports and this and the differences between the two. Because there is a push right now, there's a very real push to make competitive gaming um, on the same par as sports. I mean, that's why you're seeing the word esports all over the place. Back when I started playing competitively, no one used the word esports. This is a new term that was invented in order to make gaming more mainstream. Because there is a real drive to make competitive gaming on the same echelon as NFL, NBA, UFC. And that's, it's it's weird because people will say, no, it's a real sport. And then other people will be like, no, it's not a real sport because you don't even have to move. I mean, how can you have a dude who's 400 pounds and call him an athlete, you know? And I can't lie, I kind of agree with that. But here's the thing, there's this comparison going on, but I don't even think there, there really should be a comparison. I think they, li- they literally exist in two separate lanes, and they can't even... There's only a few ways that you can compare sports to competitive gaming. Um, I've been in both worlds before, and from my understanding, there is a... Uh, there's... There's a deeper physical level to sports, 110%. But I would say that there's probably... I don't know, I've never played sports professionally. But if you just look at gaming on paper, it seems like gaming takes a deeper mental capacity than sports do. And I, let me explain why. If you're playing basketball, the UFC is different. Because mentality and the way your mind works, these are all very squirrely subjects right but let's just take soccer or football or basketball you can have one or two star players that dominate the game and when they get tired or if other players get tired you can sub them out there's no the the pressure is not as intense yeah you have a giant stadium of people that are watching you but when when you're at a gaming tournament uh there are no substitutes there are zero substitutes you can't you, you can't say, oh, I'm tired, oh, I'm playing badly, just sub me in, oh, I, I hurt my thumb. Like, there's, there's none of that. Uh, especially in, if you're a console gamer, it's typically 4v4. And a good way to look at console gaming competitively is look at four wheels on a car. Those four wheels on the car have to all, not only have the same pressure, they have to be synced up with each other, and they have to be working in conjunction with each other. I mean, they, everything has to be on point. Uh, the level of teamwork that competitive gaming requires is, I feel, on a whole other level, not including the fact that gamers are not limited by their bodies. You can pick up a controller, and you can play for 16 hours a day if you want to, and no one can stop you, and that gives you an edge when it comes to how much practice you can put in. In sports, your body hits a, hits a level of exhaustion. There's, there's, a, there's a point where you have to stop. You don't have a choice. You have to stop. And you can train mentally, and you can read, and you can do a bunch of shit, but with gaming, you don't have to stop. You wake up. You can eat, breathe, and live it if you want to. And th- these are these are real differences that need to be accounted for. 
and even if let's say let's 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 make a comparison between like who would be a player that you guys might know of that every every gamer might know of? Nade Shot. Okay, Nade Shot's a bad example because Nade Shot's not that good. Like he, like I wouldn't call Nade Shot like the Kobe Bryant of Call of Duty. You know, like he's good, but he's not like he's not that good. He's he's one events, but if you ask any pro play, a lot of pro players, I, it's it's obvious that they don't look at him as like a as like a monster. It's it's obvious, <clears throat> and. You just, I don't know what a good example would be. Anyway, with gaming, you can have a star player. You can have that one dude that just goes off and is just a beast. But you can't have one guy uh, when it, you can't have one dude when it, it has to be all four people have to be on the same page. And you have to have four people that are star players. You can't have any, any people that ride the bench. There is none of that. And if you do, it's insanely lucky. And that's just because your teammate was on some type of god flow that weekend and he was untouchable and but that's rare man it's rare to see and that's not how dynasties are made <clears throat> so these are these are real differences that need to be accounted for now here's the other thing that's so interesting about gaming versus sports is that with gaming let me let me put it like this basketball has been around for a long time basketball has been around for years so the evolution of the game has become insanely deep. So you could sit here and be like, nah, man, you know, basketball takes a whole other level of depth than any type of video game could. And on, on one level, you're right. But the only reason that you would be right is because with basketball, with basketball, it's been around for such a long time. And what you notice with competitive gaming is that these games come out every two, three, four years. So imagine, let's try and let's try and take that example into the basketball world. Imagine basketball had a completely different set of rules every three years. And imagine the players had different abilities. Imagine, you know, maybe three years down the road, all of a sudden, every player had to wear weights on their shoes. Right, so no more dunking. Can't dunk anymore. Just because the people who made the game were like, eh, you know, it seems a little unfair. We're just we're gonna take that out. You can't you can't dunk anymore. You know, we just we don't want it. Sorry, too bad. There it's it there would be this weird thing where all of a sudden you'd have different players that rise to the top every few years and instead of it becoming about how quickly or instead of it becoming about mastering the game it becomes instead a race of who can get to the highest level of proficiency the quickest. And those are, those are big distinctions to make because you can, as a child, start playing basketball and the rules never change up until you hit, you know, the pro league. But with gaming, you start off as a teenager. By the time you're in your 20s or 30s or however old you're competing for, you, not only are you not playing the same game, you're it's it's just a complete they're completely new worlds that you're entering constantly. So it becomes much more about how quickly can I get good? Can I become better than the other person faster than they can? It's it's almost like a race more so than it is I've been practicing for 20 years and I have this down to a science. And you can notice this for instance, I played Gears of War competitively, right? And all you have to do is look at a game, look at games that just came out that just started to become, that are just now being competitive and they've been out for two to three years versus a game like Counter-Strike, which has been out for over a decade. And so with Counter-Strike players, you have this, this level of expertise that just dwarfs most, uh, most other games and the skill gap is huge because of that. But in another game, let's say a new Gears of War game comes out, a new player can come along and he can pick it up and he can get in the soup of the professional players just because everyone else is kind of starting on a new slate. Of course, there are things that carry over. Of course, if you were good at past games, it's going to help. It's going to help you in what you decide to do in the future and in, in the next title. But for the most part, there is you, you lose a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't you lose a little bit of skill and then you have to kind of like relearn the new mechanics that the developers put into motion. And that's the other thing too that's very weird is that 
you have a relationship with de- there's no developers in sports there's but there's a real relationship with developers and players within the gaming world so you can see how quickly this kind of gets away from you and how deep these differences are now this is my prediction if i had to predict where gaming could go i would assume that if you look in the next 10 20 30 40 years gaming is going to surpass sports i just i don't think i don't think physical activity of any kind is going to be able to compare to what's going to come out around the corner i mean virtual reality is already here right it's already here so if you logically extend that in the progression of technology how quickly until you're going to see first person shooters played in virtual reality on an esport type of level where everyone can watch it where you're watching someone fly around a fucking stadium shooting things and you're there watching it and you can see it from their eyes like imagine being able to go inside the eyeballs of Kobe Bryant as he's about to make a play you can you know and you can hear him talking to his team you can hear everything and you can everything is visible to you there's just a level of intimacy that's just sports are just not gonna be able to match and it's just a matter of time man and people think that esports is just this competitive nerd this is the other thing too is that the main reason why and it's it's a it's a it's a flawed it's a flawed understanding but the main reason why you know i think you've got these athletes and people within the sports associations looking at esports as this like like who the fuck are you type of thing is because first of all you can find a lot of nerds you can find a lot of nerds at these gaming conventions but it's actually not true i mean i i have some very wild stories from going to tournaments and just you meet crazy people not just nerds i mean you meet engineers you meet entrepreneurs you meet scientists i mean you meet thugs you meet bodybuilders you meet every walk of life there it it has nothing to do with physical appearances and everything to do with with the capacity of someone's mind and their ability to outthink the people that are around them and in that respect in that respect uh athletes and competitive gamers have everything in common because at a core level right if you strip away all these labels what is really going on on a sport level and a gaming level? Well, what's really going on is you have a bunch of play, a bunch of different people. Let's say a group of four hundred people, and they assemble into teams based on what they want and who they want to play with, and it becomes a a weird hyperactive game of chess, where it's chess at four hundred times the speed, and it becomes about outthinking the other person on a deep level about understanding the mechanics better than the other person and once you hit a certain level everyone understands those mechanics but being able to get someone to do what you want them to do being able to set them up so that way you can make a play being able to get in someone's head so deeply that they become silly putty for you and i've experienced this and i have a feeling that professional athletes have felt this too and they would know exactly what i'm talking about because what was I gonna say? I, f- I forget what I was gonna say. But on that level, on that level, I think esports and regular sports have all the commonalities in the world. I think sports players and you know, I, I think Kobe Bryant and Nate Shaw could probably ha- get along great. I think they'd have a lot in common with each other. But then when you start to look at the surface layers of it and you start to break it down like mechanically. That's where you start to get all the weird differences. Like, imagine watching a UFC fight, right? But the rules of the UFC change every two to three years where, you know, one year, you know, you have gloves. The next year, you don't have gloves. And then all of a sudden, you know, the people who run the UFC, they just keep changing things up. The size of the octagon changes. You know, that's that's the, a good comparison between maps, right? If you're playing a, if you're playing Counter-Strike competitively, you have different maps that you need to learn. And every few years, there's new maps that you need to learn. Imagine the UFC having a different type of octagon every year. They had some, or they had some, and on top of that, there's verticality, right? What sport has verticality to it? I mean, in what sport do you have to fly through windows and, 
you know, look, you know, you've one dude on a hill and then you're down here. Or this dude's in a window and then you need to try and get out. Like, there's, there's just, there's, there's too many differences. There's too many differences that need to be accounted for. And, um, I don't think that comparison should really be made at all. I don't even think, I honestly, if I'm being honest, I don't even think they should be called esports. I think that, that, that label is just a diluted label. Fuck it, dude. Call it competitive gaming. I mean, who cares? People, like the average gamer, I think the average gamer these days is 36 years old. Mm. Don't judge me, I'm smoking a cigarette. I'm in the process of quitting, but look, yo, it's hard out here for a pimp, you feel me? <laughs> but yo, we're enjoying this, we're just having a good conversation. Don't smoke, kids, don't smoke. It's bad for you. But, mm. this, uh, this label thing is just, just, it just weirds me out. It weirds me out to see it, and I don't, I don't think that there should be any labels. I think that athletes just need to understand that um, what they do is in a completely different realm. And I, I would assume that sports associations would probably agree, but they would agree for different reasons. They would just say it's nerdy, it's not. They, they don't understand it. They don't understand it for what it is. So on a surface level, they would agree with me, but not for the same reasons that I'm talking about here. Well, you see, I know MLG is like trying to push this to be bigger than the NFL, and I don't even think they really need to. I think it's really just a matter of time. You know, once we get this virtual reality thing off the ground, man, it's a wrap. I mean, okay, look, look at what we got today, man. Look at this technology that we got going on today. We got Google Glass. I went to, a, I got some blood work done the other day, and my doctor, this is, this, this is real shit, real shit. My doctor was using Google Glass to, uh, and he had a scribe in another room. And, I mean, this is not like a high-tech hospital. Their x-ray machine broke. I mean, these guys aren't like, you know, it's just a regular place. This dude is using Google Glass, and he has a scribe in the other room who's watching me. And they're transcribing the interaction, and then he gets the notes afterwards. All right, now how interesting is that? Now, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to look at the natural progression of technology and figure out that it is not too long from now where that virtual reality thing this big bulky headset that you put on your face just becomes a contact lens that you put in your eyeball i don't think that's outside the realm of possibility when you have all this information in the cloud i could see this happening right if i'm just theorizing here imagine you had a contact lens and you had an operating system that existed within the cloud i don't man as for some of you computer engineers you might be able to know better than i am but but you would know way better than i do but Imagine being able to have like a cloud type of operating system that taps into any type of contact lens that you have and then you can enter these virtual realities and you can watch other people's realities too, other people's virtual realities. So all of a sudden competitive gaming becomes this thing that you can tune into at any time, you can see other people's perspectives and you're viewing a whole other universe and you know you completely disengage the human aspect of ourselves and sports is this very human animal thing i mean it's it's an outlet of aggression and gaming is an outlet of aggression too it's definitely an outlet of aggression but it's a different type um maybe even a little bit of repression going on there but that's that's a different type of topic um but it's it's one of those things where I could see in a hundred years where sports just don't become that important anymore. On top of that, on top of that, look at what's happening with, with all these drugs that are coming out and the fact that I think it'll get to a point where everyone, there's, I don't think there's going to be any more fat people, <laughs> honestly. I think we have a fat epidemic at the moment, but I think science is going to get to a point where fat people just don't exist anymore. I think it's going to get to this weird point where you take a shot and you're ripped and that's it and you don't need to do the work you don't need to do the the sweat in the gym and that's a i think that's a big drawback for a lot of people when it comes to sports is just not putting in that work and when that barrier gets broken down i think sports are going to become less impressive and competitive gaming is going to become more impressive just because of the visuals that are accompanied by it not including all the other side aspects of this virtual reality thing that are that are coming to the forefront. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this virtual reality thing is kind of scary to me, if I'm being really honest. If we want to segue into something else, 
I think it's going to be, I, I, I'll, uh, I'll be honest with you guys again, that I don't think I'm going to be around the gaming scene when virtual reality really pops off. I, I don't, because I have a, uh, I have a very addictive personality. I think everyone has an addictive personality to some degree, but I become wildly obsessive over things to a degree that can be somewhat scary to people. And I could see myself getting completely lost in a virtual reality type of world. And I know myself well enough that I'm going to exit the gaming scene before I let something like that happen. Before I let because it would be too enticing i mean i i don't think real life is going to be able to compare to the type of virtual life that you could have in 20 to 30 years imagine if this was really nailed down completely imagine if this was really nailed down to the finest degree possible i mean you would be able to live in a reality that is more beautiful that is more action-packed that is more interesting and is completely outside of the realm of space and time and you could go there for free i mean what incentive would you have to get up and go talk to people if if that happened i mean would you even want to and for me i'm trying to get away from that i like gaming but you know i i can't i can't that's just not a life I want to live. I mean, maybe if I could be immortal, I could, you know, fuck around in that world for like 20 years. But I, that's, I'm not going to do that. Everyone's got to die. And even if I could be immortal, I don't even think I would be. Because I don't want to see... I wouldn't want to see my friends die either. But I don't know, man. I don't know. I think this virtual reality thing, I think technology is becoming very weird. I think it's becoming very weird. And we live in a weird time. Um... Man, I think I think that's really all I got to say about this. If you enjoyed, if you... I, these could be longer. I could probably keep going, but these are really all my thoughts I have on the subject. I hope you enjoyed, and see, yo, I only said fuck like once or twice this time. And I didn't even really have to try. I just, you know, really, that last video I put out, I really, I just, I said fuck so much. I don't know why. I really, I was feeling myself too much. That's what it was. I was fuck, 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 fuck. Bitch, titty, high as a giraffe, pussy, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever whatever um yeah i think that does it guys uh this should tide you over i've got some other stuff i want to talk about that i'll put out in the future but i gotta hold off man i can't i can't unleash all my ideas so quickly you know i just figured i've been gone for so long i might as well hit you with a double tap you know one two little one two jab and uh we'll be back we'll be back man i'm always you know i got some stuff cooking up i got some stuff i'm working on but that is about it if you enjoy this by the way tell me if you guys like this or not because i i like doing stuff like this because i can kind of just do whatever i want i'd say whatever i want i don't have to worry about time limits i don't have to worry about really anything and I, on top of that i don't have to edit either and yo editing i hate editing i fucking i'm not bad at it and i can do it pretty quickly but the only reason I can do it quickly is because I hate it so much. I'm just like, I need, I, like, I know all the little hot keys, like control S, control whatever. And I can do boom, 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 and I'm done. But it's a pain in the fucking ass. I can't even lie. Um, yep, that does it for me. If you have any thoughts, please hit me with something interesting. That's what, you know what, that's what I want you guys to do. I want you to, if you're going to comment, well, you can comment, do whatever, what am I going to say? If you're going to comment, these are the rules. No, not at all. Say what you want, but yeah, tell me what you think. Like, I want some deep ideas here, you know? Like, I want a back and forth. I want you guys to tell me what you think about this. And if you disagree, I want your reasoning as to why. Because if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I want to know what you think. You feel me? Anyway, that does it. I fucking love you, I think. I don't know you, but I love you. <laughs> Weird how that works. Anyway, peace.